Hello, my name is Brian Casey. I'm editor-in-chief of AntMini.com, and we're here on the conference on machine intelligence in medical imaging, sponsored by the Society for Imaging Informatics in Medicine. We have with us right now Dr. Elliot Siegel. He is a radiologist at the uh, VA Healthcare System and also the University of Maryland. So, uh, Dr. Siegel, thanks for being with us today. Sure, it's my pleasure. Great. So, uh, Dr. Siegel, you were uh, pretty instrumental. You one of the one of the folks putting this this meeting together. What's the goal of of this meeting, and what are you trying to accomplish? The goal of the meeting is to have something that would be a supplement to the annual SIN meeting to allow us the ability to be able to go significantly deeper in scientific content. And so it's been really gratifying as we have over 300 people who are here, a large number of MDs, a large number of PhDs, and a large number of folks from industry. And we have the ability to be able to have folks present creative and innovative and really interesting research in great detail and in some degree of um, technical detail as well. So a lot of folks who were more interested than they might be at the general imaging informatics meeting um, in machine learning and in learning about it and in um, essentially comparing notes and being able to create a community of folks who are doing more technical things in um, medical imaging in machine learning. It's a fantastic opportunity and we've seen the attendance grow over the past few years um, and every year it's exceeded our expectation. This year that we're having it in San Francisco there's over 300 people and the quality of the people who are here has been really outstanding. The, the sessions have been really outstanding. So um, it, yes. here on Sunday, uh, if you're in San Francisco on Monday, uh, swing by. It's at the Hilton uh, near Chinatown. Yes. Um, so what are what are some of your thoughts on the current state of artificial intelligence and and how it's shaking out right now in radiology? Well, we've had artificial intelligence or um, neural networks or convolutional neural networks in imaging for many many years. But what's happened is with a combination of tremendous investment in um, deep learning technologies and with faster and faster computers and more and more data scientists, what we're finding is a significant acceleration in the number of algorithms that are being developed, in the number of folks who are in medical imaging already who are starting to write algorithms with clinical input and in the people who aren't in medical imaging but are in computer science who are becoming interested in medical imaging. So the really most interesting thing is that all of a sudden there's been an incredible acceleration in the number of algorithms, the number of applications, and what that's resulted in is folks who may traditionally come up with a similar set of ideas are now being added to by a large number of really new people who are coming up with interesting, innovative, creative ideas that we may not have thought of. Mm. And uh, this meeting has been a great example of some of the myriad of applications. Great. Now we saw a lot of really exciting uh, presentations this morning on AI and radiology. What are some of the things that you think are most exciting? Well, some of the things that I think are most exciting are applications that begin to demonstrate how we can apply this in actual clinical practice. For many years, I've been in charge of the SPA IE medical imaging meeting where there were a lot of theoretical presentations on um, research to continue to improve accuracy at doing a variety of tasks. What's happening more at this meeting is that people are reporting on their real world experience when they take those algorithms and they actually start putting them into clinical practice and some of the challenges associated with applying this at multiple institutions on multiple scanners. So for me, a lot of the real life experience has been um, something that's been really exciting. Yeah. And being able to see some significant um, incremental changes in accuracy has been great, but some new and novel applications has been really tremendously exciting. Yeah. Now, um, there are still a lot of challenges to AI and, and it, it sounds like we've gotten over the fear factor that, mm -hmm. that radiology had initially with AI. We've gotten past that. Yes. Um, but it sounds like there are still some challenges to getting AI out into the, the clinical world on a routine basis. What are some of those? Well, um, the challenges are significant, and they're so significant that although there are conferences like this one and, and many others where there are great presentations on AI applications, as a radiologist, when I go back to my practice at University of Maryland, at you know, the Baltimore VA Medical Center, I have access to almost none of these types of applications. So the question is, why has it taken so long for those to come over? And I think part of it is that we are um, in a workflow where we are typically using our PACs or using our modality workstations. And to a large extent, there has not been the ability to be able to incorporate these into the workflow and into 
the PAC systems that we have. So we are now consuming these um, via portals. So there might be a really interesting application that I like, but I have to sign on to a web portal in order to be able to do it, and it's a different interface, and I need to learn that. And I need to convince my IT folks that it's okay for me to go out on the web to a portal, send patient information outside, and what we really need is a better mechanism, whether it's through the cloud or internally, of being able to consume these algorithms so, and be able to test them out. And so I'd like to be able to try some of them out for research purposes and, and also be able to for commercial purposes. And I think what's going to happen is that what I think of as a PACS today and what we mostly think of as a PACS today is going to change dramatically in the next 10 years where rather than consuming one vendor's algorithms, I'm going to be able to use best of breed algorithms and consume those and I'll be able to go to one place and be able to have access to multiple different algorithms that I need and so my packs and my workflow will really consist of something that consolidates many different types of AI applications for specific types of things. Right. Now, RSNA is coming up in just a couple months in mm -hmm. Chicago. Um, what do you expect to see? Last year was, was kind of the year of AI mm -hmm. at RSNA. What do you expect to see this year? I think this year we're going to start seeing the year of um, delivery via platforms. There are a number of different companies that are talking about um, having mechanisms to be able to deliver multiple AI algorithms. I think we're going to start at RSNA seeing mechanisms where people can actually see these in actual clinical practice. And now that we have a handful of FDA cleared applications, we're going to be seeing more and more people with experience of actually using these AI applications and presenting those also. And so um, I'm really excited for uh, RSNA this year because I think there will be significant changes from last year. Great. Well, um, we're excited as well. And uh, if you, again, if you happen to be in downtown San Francisco uh, for the rest of this afternoon, Sunday, or uh, on Monday, please swing by and uh, some great talks going on uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, uh, Elliot, thanks for being with yeah, us. Yeah, thanks, Brian. It was really a pleasure. And thanks so much for the uh, coverage of the sure. conference. We really appreciate it. Our pleasure.